Hi, this is Stuart Bruce. I'm GIS Program Coordinator at Washington College, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about geodatabases and how you make them, uh, import, export uh, data, and um, we're going to be using Art Catalog today, so I'm going to go ahead and open that up. Now, in our GT101 course, uh, we have provided you some data, and what we're going to be doing is working inside the geodatabases folder very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a new geodatabase. So to do that, it's extremely simple. We're going to come over to our uh, sort of table of contents here, catalog tree. We're going to go to the geodatabases folder inside the GT101 folder. We will right click, then we will select new and we can pick between either the file geodatabase or the personal geodatabase. Now, for purposes of our um, lesson today, we are asking that you use the personal geodatabase because it's much easier to upload a single file using the personal. However, in your production work, um, I am suggesting to everyone that you actually use the file geodatabase. It's the later geodatabase format. It has a larger capacity and some other benefits for you. But for today and for the exercise, we're going to use the personal geodatabase. So we simply select that, and instantly we have a new personal geodatabase. Now note that it is named New Personal Geodatabase, a very uh, unique name. And what we want to do is go ahead and change the name of that. And I believe the lesson asks you to call it your last name underscore geodatabase. So I'm going to call mine Bruce underscore geodatabase. Now I do want to point out that uh, when you use this tool in Art Catalog, this automatically generates in basically a version 10 geodatabase. Uh, a version 10 geodatabase cannot be read by an earlier version of ArcGIS. So if you have some users that are still using 9.2 and 9.3 and you want to share this data with them, they will not be able to use this because it's version 10. So if you actually want to use um, and create an older version geodatabase in ArcGIS 10, what you have to do is go to the toolbox. And I'm going to show you that real quickly. So we come over here to the Arc toolbox. Uh, of course, there's a lot of tools. And one of the tools that we're going to use here is in the data management toolbox. And if we scroll to the very last tool drawer, which is called Workspace, we have some options here. So we can create a file geodatabase and we can create a personal geodatabase. I'm going to go ahead and create another personal geodatabase, but I'm going to use the tool instead of right clicking on the folder and just creating a new one. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the tool. And when I do so, it's a, it's a pretty simple tool. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick where do I want the geodatabase to be located. So I'm going to go ahead and select my browse button. And I'm going to navigate. I'm going to put it in my geodatabases folder. And I'm going to call this Bruce Geodatabase version 9 underscore 2. I'm trying to keep uh, from using any spaces. And I'm going to select Add. And it's actually goofed up there because I'm really not supposed to put the name in. I'm just just supposed to select the location. I'm going to select the folder, then hit add. So it wants to know where I'm going to put the geodatabase. Then you name the geodatabase. So to be honest with you, I forget this all the time. So I'm going to call it Bruce Geodatabase version nine underscore two now this next dialog here where it says personal geodatabase version which is optional uh, if you don't put anything here it's just going to create a version 10 but there's a little drop down arrow here which allows us to create um, what version you want now notice there's no option to create a version 8 and if you're still using version 8 of arcgis it's about time you got everybody upgraded so i'm going to go ahead and select version 9.2 and then I simply click OK. And with lightning speed, it should appear. 
you'll notice down here in the bottom, you'll see a little dialog. Anytime you execute a tool, um, this little dialog pops up and lets you know that ArcGIS is working on it for you. So here we can see I now have a second geodatabase. Um, and if I put data in here, then anyone with the previous version 9.2 or later would be able to see this data. All right, next I'm going to talk about importing and exporting data to the geodatabase. And there's really two ways you could do the same thing. You could either go to the um, data that you want to import. In this example, I'm going to use PA County uh, underscore project. You could right click on that data and then select export to geodatabase signal. I'll go over the to geodatabase multiple in a second. To geodatabase single. And I'm going to select my output location, which is going to be my um, geodatabase that I made. I'm going to go ahead and put everything into my 10 geodatabase. So I select my location. I don't double click on it and go inside it. Hit add. Then I give it the name I want to. This is a really good opportunity here. Um, in this case, if you'll note, it says PA underscore county underscore project. Here we have an opportunity to name this feature class. So if you have some files that you're importing that are poorly named, uh, you can rename them. So I'm going to go ahead and call this Pennsylvania. This assumes that I know how to spell Pennsylvania. So Pennsylvania County. Like that. Now, another thing that I can do during this import process um, is I want you to notice that there is a, an expression. So if I click the SQL query, I could actually query the data as I'm importing it and do a select by attributes to only pull out certain data. Now, the select by attributes in the query builder is something that we cover um, in much better detail, really, in the GT102 course. So I'm not going to go into a lot of details on this right now, but just be aware uh, of this functionality that you can build into the export process. We also have the ability, if we look here, uh, it tells us all the fields that are being imported. So if there were some of these fields that we didn't want, let's say, for example, I did not want the sound field, I could select the sound field right here and I could come over and delete that field. So that field would not be deleted. Another very, very useful function, um, let's say, for example, that you use the video um, field a lot. You can adjust the order that the video field appears in your file. OK, well, I'm going to take back what I just said about moving the fields up and down. Uh, because that's not working like I thought it would. Um, this geodatabase settings down here, we can open it up. Uh, there's some configuration keywords, not something that normally uh, you would worry about. Then we basically select OK. And then if we open up our geodatabase by double clicking on it, we can see that we now have Pennsylvania counties in our geodatabase. Now we could have done the exact same thing, but from the reverse direction. So instead of going to the file that we want to put into the geodatabase, we could have gone to the geodatabase, right clicked, and select Import Feature Class Single. Then we could have used the Browse button here, and we could have found PA County Project, hit Add, go ahead and give it a name that we want. On this one, I'm going to call just PA2. Same thing with the fields, you can delete and so forth, and then we can click OK. It shouldn't take very long at all, and see now we have it in again. So you can either export the file that you want into the geodatabase, or you can go to the geodatabase and basically import any file that you want. Now let's say that you have, for example, a coverage. So if I look here at this PAMCD, which stands for Pennsylvania Minor Civil Divisions, and if I open this up, you can see that within a coverage, we have an arc, label, polygon, and then a tick. Let's say, for example, that I'd like to do all of those at one time into my geodatabase and not do them one at a time. So if I go to my coverage, right-click on the title of the coverage, select Export 
to geodatabase. Notice that it automatically gives me the option to geodatabase multiple. So I'm going to select that option. And notice it automatically picked up all four of the files in the coverage. Now, since I'm going into a geodatabase, perhaps I do not want this tick coverage. So I can select that, come over and hit my little X to delete, and then I won't bring that one in. Now I have to find my output geodatabase, which is going to be Bruce Geodatabase. I'm going to hit Add, and it's going to go ahead and import it. Now, one of the drawbacks of using the feature class to geodatabase multiple is that notice how um, it did not give me an option to rename the file. It also did not give me an option to delete certain fields. So when you use the multiple tool, you're pretty much going to get the exact same names that you had in your source files, and you have all the same fields. So there may be times when you really just don't want to use the multiple field, and you want to bring them in one at a time. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And we're going to wait just a second or two. Maybe more than a second or two. While we're waiting, I'm just going to go ahead and hit pause. All right, now if I go and look at my Bruce Geodatabase, I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And now you can see that I've imported in my files. Now, in theory, I could come here and I could rename them to something that I wanted to. Now, within the geodatabase, you can see I now have three polygon layers, and I have a line layer, and I have a point layer. Let's say, for example, inside my geodatabase, I'd like to clean up and sort of organize some of these various feature classes. To do that, I could use what is called a feature data set. So I'm going to go back to my geodatabase. I'm going to go ahead and right click, and I'm going to create a new feature data set. I'm going to call this feature data set PA underscore boundary. Go ahead and hit next. Now it's asking me to use the coordinate system. Now feature data sets, all the data inside a feature data set must have the same projection coordinates. So if I know I'm going to import these three layers into my feature data set, the simplest thing to do at this stage here where you choose the coordinate system is to import the coordinate system from the layer that you're trying to add to the feature data set. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit the import button and I'm going to go ahead and just grab the projection definition for my PA underscore MCD. So I'm going to select that, click Add, and then I'm going to hit Next. Now there's no vertical coordinate system for this layer, so I'm just going to ignore this and hit Next again. I can set an XY tolerance. Um, in general, you're well advised to stay with whatever the default is. I'm going to go ahead and click Finish. Now that I have my feature data set, I can simply in Art Catalog drag these layers to my feature data set. And then when I expand my feature data set, you can see that I have these files now neatly organized into one file. There's really not a whole lot more to this exercise. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of preview, though, uh, while we're here. Uh, if I come over to the Bruce Geodatabase and I right click and select Properties, here in the Properties dialog, this tells me a few things about the Geodatabase. Um, it's a personal Geodatabase. It's a version 10 Geodatabase you can see down here. But I also have this Domains tab. Now in this domain tab, this is where you would establish attribute domains and you could make um, some pre-coded domains and when you added fields, you'd be able to use those. This is covered in our, uh, I believe our GT201 or possibly our GT202 course, a more advanced geodatabases lesson. But I thought I'd just give you a little sort of preview of what these database properties are.
Okay, well, the last thing we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and open up ArcMath. And while we wait, what we're going to do is um, just to reinforce this idea of uh, dragging and dropping layers, I'm going to stop with a uh, new um, empty map. I'm going to minimize this a little bit so I can see it. And I'm going to move our catalog over here. so I can see both screens at one time. Just take me a second here. So if I want to bring these files into ArcMap, all I have to do then is select it in Arc Catalog, drag it over to ArcMap, and here are my different files. Go ahead and put that polygon below it, and voila! I now have a nicely organized geodatabase. All my data is in the current um, file structure. And notice that when I open up the attribute table, at the very end of it, this I can always tell if something was ever in a geodatabase format, we've added these two new fields, shape length and shape area. Now, if it had only been a line, we would have just had shape length. And if it had been a point, neither of these would be here. But these are automatically calculated. So if I do any editing at all on the layer, when I finish and save my edits, ArcGIS automatically recalculates the shape length and the shape area, saving you the bother of doing it. Well, that's all we have for geodatabases. This is actually a pretty quick lesson, and I hope you enjoy it.